morning. In the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. You don't know what they can do. We ain't glad with this thing, Jesus. Oh, God, it's for real this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. Bless, hallelujah. The musicians this morning. Get in that fight of glory. Hallelujah. Now pray on the anointing and power of you, Lord. Get into the songs of the day, Lord. Now the seed of God under the anointing of God in the name of Jesus. God, reach your hand and touch those in prison this morning. Touch the hallelujah, Jesus. Touch the office this morning in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, hallelujah. Somebody had to go to the hospital.
drawn out of the earth. It is impure. It has to go through a purification process. Hey, so you take gold and you look like you're hurting it. You put it in the fire. But what begins to happen is that all of the impurities begin to rise to the top. What happens when the enemy, he throw these trials on you. He thought they were going to bring you down. But it makes you pure. What you got is a better product.
you have broken the church now. You pray in God and you are unemployed. But thank God for the fire that Sunday. What was meant to kill you? Purified. Somebody praise had to be validated.
but be strong and be courageous. Sons and daughters of God, it's time to come forth. Ah, God, it's time to come forth. Be strong, be courageous. Your praise ain't based off how you feel. That's superficial. Ah, God, that has no power. Ah, God, but when you got a praise that's based off of history, hey, God, the history, the history, the history, the history that you know in God, things can be dark all around you, but you know in the end, we're going to win. You know that in the end, oh, God, we're going to win. We're gonna win. Don't care how many eggs you blow. Hey. It might look like it's going in his favor, back in your favor, but in the end, you're gonna win. Now let's bless God. Come on, come on, come on. Let's bless God. Let's bless God for our history. As it is in the natural, so it is in the spirit. Somebody that doesn't have good credit history ain't gonna consistently pay their bills. They don't have a good history. But those got history with God gonna consistently give him his praise. Mm -hmm. Oh God, <laughs> God, oh God, yeah.
to the move on. a lot of looking around, but I don't see much praising. What God has done for us, the doors he's open for us, we ought to praise his name. And friends, help friends praise. I see a praise break over here, and a praise break over there. But we need to come together as a body of Christ, as a church, the way church is led. Praise the Lord. Somebody lift up the name of God. Somebody give him the praise. Where you should still have that same joy. Yeah. Oh, 
saying? As we offer up our praise, we offer up our offering to God. And we encourage you to play by cash app, which is dollar sign the way church, 6600. But if you want to give a monetary donation, please stand in your spot and raise your hand. And one of our deacons will assist you with it. You have your offering, raise your hand. Dear Lord God, my Heavenly Father, God, we ask you to bless this seed as well as the soul. Bless it like you blessed the two fish and the five loaves of bread. Help them to walk in abundance all of the days of their life. Help them to unlock doors that otherwise be shut. In the mighty match in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Song for the musicians. What? 
praise. It's not, it's not predicated on what I'm going through. Hallelujah. It's not predicated on my circumstances. It's predicated on who God is. Is that all right? I said, thank God. I heard that the praise the Lord assistant pastor talking about in the fire. So sometimes you got to preach while you're in the fire. Sometimes you got to shout and sing while you're in the fire. Sometimes, sometimes that thing gets so hot you can't do nothing but just walk around in the fire. Anybody ever just walk around in the fire? Hallelujah. I, I, sometimes you just got to walk around in the fire. Why, why you got to walk around in the fire? Praise the Lord. The Bible said that when they threw, amen, hallelujah, the three Hebrew children in the fire. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He came back, hallelujah, and he looked, amen, in the furnace. And you know, praise the Lord, they supposed to have been consumed and burned up. But what? they wasn't shouting. They wasn't running around in the fire. But the Bible said they were walking in the fire. Go back and read it. Sometimes, sometimes you got to walk in the fire. Why you got to walk in the fire? Because I got to let the devil know I'm still here. I may be in the fire, but I still got a heartbeat. I may be in the fire, but I still got a pulse. Y'all pray with me. Hallelujah. Because all this week, I sought the Lord. And he, praise the Lord, gives you, I don't know how he deal with y'all, but sometimes he gives me a message ahead of time. Sometimes he'll put it in the bag and I ain't got to worry about it for a whole month or so because the Lord just said this is what I want you to deal with and I said thank you sir because he make it easy on you but then sometimes praise the Lord the Lord being the kind of God he is sometimes he'll hold that thing to the last moment and Elder Lewis the call you gave me on yesterday confirm what the Lord wanted to say today. Hallelujah. When you called me, praise our God, something started in my soul. My baby leaped. Mandoshata. Ha! You better keep some people around you that can make your baby leap. I don't, need, I don't need a bunch of dead folk around me. I need some folk, praise God, that when I get in a situation, they can say something that'll, how, if, if, my, if my battery on low and I need a charge and your battery on low, we can't help nobody. But every once in a while, I pray the Lord to get to get me one of them cold mornings, you got to find somebody that got a charge. How you look at somebody and say, charge me. God from Zion. We honor the Lord this amen morning for all of you God's people. Praise the Lord. Can we give our King of King and Lord of Lord the best praise that you have. <laughs> Certainly to our assistant pastor, praise the Lord. Thank God for it. One thing about Ella Lewis, Ella Lewis know how to drag your brakes. You act like you're going to sit there, not stand up, wave your hand. Do you keep sitting there? Fire, fire, when fire touches you, it'll move you. Ain't that right? We honor the Lord for all of our ministers on today. Praise the Lord. To our deacons, amen. Can you just give God a praise for our awesome praise and worship team? Yeah. Yeah. Know how to take you there, praise the Lord. They're not up here performing, they go in. 
And, and I always say, if you sing it and you can't feel it, I can't either, praise the Lord. But when you go to sing it and you go to feel it, it, it something go to turn it over on the inside. Hallelujah. Certainly, praise the Lord, last but not least to Amen. Our first lady, we honor God for her. Amen. I have a word from the Lord today. And it's a different kind. Hallelujah. But follow me. I need to go to two passages of scripture. I want to go to the book of 1 Samuel, the 16th chapter, amen, and the 7th verse. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7. And then put your finger on there, go to 2 Chronicles chapter 18. And I'm going to read verses 19 through 22. 2 Chronicles chapter 18. Verses 19 through 22. When you have these scriptures, if you will signify by standing and saying amen. amen. Hallelujah. First Samuel chapter 16. Verse 7. There you will find these words. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance or the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Second Chronicles chapter 18, verses 19. And the Lord said, Who shall entice Ahab, king of Israel, that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one spake, saying, after this man. Another saying, after that man. Then there came out a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will entice him. And the Lord said unto him, wherewith? He said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all of his prophets. And the Lord said, Thou shalt entice him, and thou shalt also prevail. Go out and do even so. Verse 22. Now therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of these prophets. Jesus. And the Lord hath spoken evil against thee. Remain standing because I want to pray with you for just a moment. Have you ever thought you knew where you were going and headed out on the highway and bless God amen took a wrong exit and that wrong exit caused you to miss where you were trying to get to it is so easy to miss this week has been a tense week. Would y'all say that? I ain't never in all of my life seen it take so long to decide who would win an election. And we understand why, but history. And yet despite the polarization of the people, amen, the nation still elected another president. What I notice 
in these last three and a half, almost four years, thank you, Jesus, is that the world have been stressed out, depressed, losing their patience, losing their cool. And Sister Adrena, I wasn't surprised at the world because the world's supposed to be the world. What have concerned me is I've seen the church lose their natural born mind over a political structure that was never designed to include them anyway. Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. And what's worse, I've seen people take religion and use it to manipulate people. Doesn't matter whether you voted for one candidate or the other. I seen preachers that can't even preach the gospel because they're so busy preaching politics. We have left souls unattended trying to straighten out the people in the White House. Y'all quiet. And I have come with a warning in my mouth this morning. That's why I wanted y'all to shout as much as you could. Because when this fell on me today, hallelujah, I felt like this might not be a shout message. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But I come with a warning in my mouth, children of God. We are in the last days. Don't fall in love with this world. Don't be fooled by this false sense of peace that is going on even now. In fact, God spoke to me and told me to tell you, don't miss God. I want you to look at somebody and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, whatsoever you do, don't you dare miss God. Hallelujah. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Help us to stand and declare this word. Help us to speak as the oracles of God. We will say what you tell us to say. We will do what you tell us to do. Let this word have free course on today. We shall give you the glory, the honor, and the praise in Jesus' mighty name. Let all God people say amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, this, this would be a somewhat of a difficult message to minister today because everybody is in the celebration mood. Amen. And rightfully so. It's, it's all right to celebrate. I ain't, I, ain't, I ain't beating up on your celebration. History has certainly been made. And I hadn't just so much came to preach a man about politics or the election. It just happens to be the most uh, outstanding example I can have right now because it's the most freshest thing in your mind. We are excited because we have made history. We somewhat have seemingly to get rid of one man that we didn't care for and have elected another one that a lot of folks still don't care for but happens maybe to be better than what we had. Amen. 
And we're so excited because for the first time in history, there's going to be a woman vice president. And she happens to be a woman of color. So the world is celebrating. And the church is celebrating. And we're dancing over a system that was not designed to include you. Mm, 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 mm. Ain't that like Pastor Scott? You throw a wet blanket. <laughs> yeah! God Almighty. We are living in the last days. Unless you lose your focus, Jesus is soon to come. He's closer now than he's ever been. And my fear is that we will lose focus, praise our God, of the things of the kingdom and start promoting the things of the world. You know, I know how to preach to a quiet church. Throughout this election season, folk vote. And you should. Ain't that right? And we get rallied around other folk and told them how they should vote. And we wore our I voted stickers. And if you went there and they didn't give you no sticker, where my voted sticker? They posted it on Facebook. I'm proud to be an American citizen. I'm proud to exercise my democratic right. Thank you, Jesus. But you haven't invited nobody to come to church. You are an incognito citizen of the king. When it comes to the things of this world, we push it, and we open, and we flamboyant about it. But when it comes to the things of this word of God and to the kingdom, we have to step on eggshells because we don't want to offend nobody. You'll go to war over somebody mispronouncing Miss Kamala Harris's name. But you will not stand up for the name of Jesus Christ. Yet you claim to have him living on the inside. I said, Lord, I chose the wrong day to come. Woo! The evangelicals have tied themselves so close to a political ideology that you've had prophets prophesying who was going to win the election. Because I like this particular
don't know about y'all, but I'm tired of playing church. I'm tired of shouting with no victory. I'm tired of checking with no power. We sitting up in churches all over America playing church. Yeah, yeah. Fighting one another yeah. over something. Yes. Hallelujah. That is temporary. Yes. You have lost your focus. I know this ain't gonna make you shout. But I come to stir up your conscience today. If all you can get out of church is a good dance, that's too low of a standard. If the only thing you can get when you come out of church is an inspirational word, that's too low of a standard. Some services you need to leave examining yourself and checking yourself to make sure that you are right with God. Because eternity is too long and hell is too high. And, and listen, if you miss the exit, you can put in your GPS and you can get back on the right track. And if you miss coming to my house, you might can come back another time. But if you miss God, your soul hangs in the back. Yes. Oh. Come on, Pastor. That's good, Pastor. And folk are gambling their life on the things of this world. Can I talk for a few minutes? In our text today, hallelujah, God allowed the people to choose a king. He looked like a king. He was tall. He was strong. Like a king. And the prophet of the Lord said, now listen to me. This kingship is not all what it's cracked up to be. Oh, we want to be like all the other nations. Ain't that right? We want to be like all the other churches. We, we, we don't want to stand out, Sister Adrena. We, want, we, want, we don't want nobody to look at us as being different. We, because you see, when, you, when, you, when you're different, that's a load that you got to carry. So let us be like all the other nations. And he protested and told them what the king would do. No, we still want a king. And this kingly looking man outright rebelled and disregarded the word of God. And God said, I rejected him. And, 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 and just to show you, some of y'all thumb your nose up at the man of God. You talk about him. You shun him. But he's fighting for you. Glory to God. You, 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 you act like he's, he, he, he's mean to you. But, but he's standing, amen, in your stead so that God don't come and wipe you off the face of the earth with some of your foolishness. Saul disobeyed God and God told Samuel, I rejected him. When God rejected him, the Bible said the man of God cried all night long. I don't get no joy when I see people fall. I don't get no joy when I see people hypocrite and, 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 and backslide and up and down. I, I don't get no joy, praise the Lord, when folk leave the church, praise the Lord. I don't get no joy when folk go the wrong way. I, I don't get no joy, amen, when the devil get a hold of people. I don't get joy. It breaks my heart. Even if you become an enemy of mine, but because I love you as a man of God, when I see a man adversity in your life, it breaks my heart. And the Bible says Samuel cried all night to God. He cried all night because this man that he loved was rejected. But I want you to understand, you can go too far. Can I preach for just a few moments? You can go too far, hallelujah, where prophecy won't help you. You can go too far where the prayers of the righteous won't reach you. You can offend God, amen, and mess up. And 
here. Rat looking nice today. Saul went too far. The man of God cried out. The Lord spoke to Samuel and said, How long you going to mourn for Saul since I rejected him? I done made my choice. Get up and move on. The man may accept you, but if God reject you, that's all. Man may hail you as somebody great, but if you are nothing in the hands of God, it don't matter what man say. I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen. amen. Hallelujah. And Saul, he says, I want you to go, Samuel, and I want you to go to Bethlehem and praise the Lord and go to where I send you. And there, amen, you're going to anoint me a new king. Praise the Lord. And when he goes there, praise the Lord. He, amen, brings a heifer. He brings a sacrifice. When he brings a sacrifice, y'all don't mind if I talk for a minute and tell the story. Praise the Lord. He, he, as directed by God, he calls the family of Jesse because out of Jesse's family, I have provided myself a king. Praise the Lord. And he's going to be a man after my own heart. And he's going to do what I told him to do. Praise the Lord. And so, hallelujah, sometimes you can be so, praise the Lord, uh, uh, stuck on what God did that you forget about what he is doing. Praise the Lord. Sometimes you can be so stuck on how things used to be that you're going to miss what God is doing now. Praise the Lord. And that's where a lot of the churches are today. They're stuck on what God has done and how he is used, but they don't understand that he's moving. Praise the Lord. God is moving. Praise the Lord. Yes, he is the same yesterday and today, but his methods, amen, are moving. Praise the Lord. Because there's something that he wants to do. And he gets down to Jesse's place. Hallelujah. And the first one comes. And he looked good, church. Look good. Look just like a statesman. Looks like somebody. You ever met people that look like somebody? They walk like somebody. They stand straight up with their chest out. Suck their stomach in. Dress nice. Woo! They look like somebody. And the prophet almost missed God. Prophets are not exempt from looking at things through the eyes of the flesh. Because sometimes if you're not careful, you'll think about what God did instead of what he's doing. And you have to get in a position to where you are listening to what God is saying. The Bible said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Which means God is consistently talking. God is consistently saying something. Y'all don't like my talk up in here. And you have to get somewhere and hear what he is saying. The problem with a lot of folk in the church, especially those of our holiness persuasion, they're so stuck on what he said and they're not listening to what he is saying. I said when you get down, pray the Lord to 97, amen, hang on right, pray the Lord. But after I said hang on right, you got to keep on listening because I got to tell you what other direction you need to take. And if all you did was pray the Lord what I said, you're going to still be stuck because I'm not done talking yet. I'm still speaking to you. And you got to hear the word of the Lord. And if you don't keep your mouth to the ear of God, if you don't keep your ear to the mouth of God, you're going to miss God. Can I talk for just a minute? He looked at him, hauled and said, surely, this is the Lord's anointing. Surely. He getting ready to make the same mistake as Israel made. Because he looked like a king. You're going to make a mistake because he looked like a preacher. She sounded like a preacher. He, he, he looked like a bishop. He sounded like an apostle. 
it because he knows how to put his words right. I don't care how good you look. If you ain't been anointed by God to do it, hallelujah, you reject it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Some of you praise the Lord. Your life is in shambles because you're following somebody that sounds like a preacher. You're following somebody that look like a preacher. Somebody went to school to be like a preacher. We dress like a preacher and got all these garments and like a preacher. But I want you to understand that clothes ain't going to make you no preacher. Hallelujah. Sounding ain't going to make you no preacher. It's going to take the anointing of the Almighty God to get down on the inside of you and make you praise the Lord. School makes students. God made preachers. Say amen. You see, a preacher ain't your best friend. Hey, a true prophet of the Lord ain't your best friend. Some of you, you want the pastor to be your dog. I'm not your dog. Hey, the Lord, I'm a mouthpiece of God. And when God come in and sit down in my mouth, I'm a sanctified vessel of God. I'm not nobody's friend because I got to say it like God said. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost up in here. Hallelujah. And the only way I'm a, I can preach salvation to you. You'll get the Holy Ghost and be on your way to heaven. But woe is me if I don't preach the gospel. I lose my soul by not telling you the truth. I lose my soul by playing around with you because I'm afraid of your emotions. I'm afraid that if I say something, you won't sit there and look at me. I'm afraid, praise the Lord, you ain't going to pay no tithe and offering if I come in and tell you you can't shack up and still be saved. Hallelujah. You, you need my shack up. Hallelujah. I, I, I'm going to lose my soul if I'm afraid to tell you if you don't stop cussing, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You on your way to hell, prayer. No, you ain't got no Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. With a nasty, filthy mouth and a filthy tongue, you need to be born again. You need to be born of the water and of the spirit like the word of God said. I got to tell you, I got to tell you that the Holy Ghost don't give no trouble. Holy Ghost ain't mean. The Holy Ghost ain't fidget high. The Holy Ghost ain't up and down. The Holy Ghost, y'all don't let my cup up in here. Either you saved or you lost. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He almost missed God. But thank God for the Holy Ghost. Because God spoke up. He said, hold up, Samuel. Don't look on his appearance. Don't look on his countenance. Don't be impressed with how good he look. Don't be impressed with how good he sound. Man looks on the outward appearance. But God looks at your heart. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. Praise the Lord. God don't care about all this pomp and circumstance and all this spilling different words that we use. God is looking at your heart. Hallelujah. God don't care how religious you get. God is looking at your heart. God don't care how much you come to church and act like you say. God is looking at your heart. Hallelujah. By him, hallelujah, he going to judge your heart. He says, I am the Lord that trieth the reins and the heart. And I'm going to give every man holly according to his doing. I'm looking at your heart. Yeah, you saying good words, but you really don't like me. Hallelujah. You smiling in my face, but you really don't like me. Hallelujah. Y'all don't like my talk. Hallelujah. The praises of men will get you in trouble. Preachers, be careful. Don't you ever fall in love. Deacons and all of you that work in the body of Christ, don't you fall in love with the praises of people. Hallelujah. Because the praises of people will make you lose out with God. Hallelujah. People will praise you today because you do what they want you to do. But the moment you fail to do like they want you to do, hallelujah, they stop praising you. And if you're doing things to get likes on Facebook, and if you're doing things that so far can say you all right, you've already missed out because the God I serve will stand up and validate you. When you got power with God, God, I feel this thing. When you got power with God, I don't care how much 
they hold back on you all. <laughs> Hallelujah. My power is not derived off of the congregation. My power comes from the inside. Y'all don't like what I'm trying to tell you. Hallelujah. And if you've been called by God, if you've been anointed by God, your power, it don't even come from the music. The music sounds good. And it'll help you. Well, you don't work yourself to death. But every once in a while, you got to shut the music off. You got to shut off the keyboard and the organ and the drum. And put that guitar down. And you got to flat foot it. Preach the word of God. Say yeah. Some of these preachers, if it wasn't for an organ, they wouldn't be able to preach. Hallelujah. But I come down from the school of hard knocks. I had to preach. Preach without an order. I've been in settings where they were so mad that they wouldn't even play behind. And so you got to preach. Glory to God. But one thing I know that if you've been anointed by the holy power of God, you can preach and the power move. Whether they say amen, you can preach and the glory will fall. Whether they like what you're doing, come on and say yeah. Sometimes the Bible says I didn't come. I didn't come to bring peace. 
but I come to bring a sword. I come to bring, hallelujah, division between a man and his son, between a mother and her daughter. God, I feel all right. What I'm trying to help you to understand, hallelujah, that if my child don't want to live right, hallelujah, I can't stand for it. I can't act like everything is all right. I'm not going to put them on front street, but I'm definitely not going to stand up for the sin that they do. I'm not going to take up for you. If you deserve a whipping, by all means, you get the whipping you got coming to you. Y'all don't like my talk up in here. Hallelujah. The church is full of a lot of hypocrisy. As long as the sin is in that man's family, I'm killing it and I'm talking about it. But let it get in my family. Let my daughter get a child out of wedlock. Then all of a sudden I'm quiet. And you can hear crickets rolling. But as long as sin in somebody else's family, you're able to talk about it. But I want to tell you that respect your person is sin. And y'all got to get rid of your family blood and get Jesus blood. I was born not by family blood, but I was born again by Jesus blood. It don't matter if my mama don't go. It don't matter if my daddy don't go. I love Lady Scott, but if she don't go, I got to go. I got to run. I charge to keep my hands and I'm gone. I got to glorify. Yeah. We're too close. We're too close. We're too close. We too in, we in too deep with people. That we can't say what need to be said. Hurt my feelings. But save my soul. Hurt my feelings. If I'm a devil, tell me I'm a devil. Hurt my feelings. But save my soul. Ain't that what he did to Peter? He told Peter, Bless not thou Simon by Jonah. Yeah. Flesh and blood didn't reveal this to you. But my father, which is in heaven. And if you stop right there, you say, Oh, Peter was a pretty good guy. Yeah. I was just a few verses on down. Peter let the devil get in. I let Jesus look at him and say, You get behind me, Satan. I'll call out the good. And I'll call out the bad too. I love you. I'll go eat with you. I'll fry you some pork chop. But if you get out of line, the word of God got so Because I don't want you to miss God. I don't want you to miss God. I don't want you to miss God. Yes, Are y'all hearing me today? Because it's getting down. Yes, sir. It's getting down to the wire. Yeah. It's getting, hey! Can't you feel it? Yes, Can't you feel it? Yes. Can't you discern the time? It's changing. It ain't the same. I, I rode, I rode down 64 on yesterday. And you know I couldn't find one trunk pit sign on the road. I drove down Smithfield where folk were proudly displayed. And I couldn't find not one sign anywhere. And someone said, well, you know, the maybe the election is over. No, something else. Because usually, when you, even when your guy lose, you hold that thing for a while. You keep riding around with the bumper sticker. And we was coming down Pool Road, and I looked down, and I saw a man that had a great big old sign. I saw him taking his sign down. Hallelujah. I'm a shot. And the Holy Ghost said, something is on the horizon. Don't you sit there. And be at all these as I. Something is on the horizon. Hallelujah. Y'all need to stop celebrating for just a moment. And get down on your knees. And call on God. And say, Lord, open my eyes. And let me see where I'm standing at. Let me see what manner of time I'm in. Because something is about to happen. Something is about to Able to stand at the backbiters, ain't gonna be 
able to stand. Hallelujah. But the only one that's going to stand are those that are tried and true. That got it like the Bible says. I said, thank God. I want you to know that the fire is about to be turned up. And you got to be ready. You got to be ready. You got to be ready. We're in the last days. You got to be ready. Stop acting like you're right. Stop acting like you're saying. Make a long story short. He made all of his sons pass by. And what now one of them? Sometimes, sometimes I can see the service. Bible said rejoice with them that rejoice. So I'm going to rejoice with you. Because the Bible tells me to rejoice with you. But everything that be on the floor ain't got no spirit. Everything that's speaking in tongues ain't got no spirit. <laughs> Y'all quiet. When you, when, 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 when you got the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost make a connection. When you got the power of God, the power of God make a connection. Y'all y'all don't like what I'm saying. And sometimes we, we, we're so highly interested. Hallelujah, and getting a frenzy going on. And it's all right to, it's all right to praise Lord. I'm not killing it because y'all know I'm a praiser. But I want some, I want to see some realness. After you get through dancing and shouting, I want your attitude to change. After you get through rolling on the floor, I, 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 I want to see some consistency in your walk with the Lord. All this up and down, in and out. You, you ain't real. And see, and see, let me tell you something. Sometimes, sometimes we so we so afraid that if we step on toes, I ain't step on them nice shoes. But if we step on toes, hallelujah, folk won't come back and see you no more. Hallelujah. But I. Hallelujah. I'm not worried about pacifying religious folks. I want somebody so to get saved. I want somebody to make it in. And the only way I know you can make it in, you got to be saved. Just like the Bible says. Don't miss God. Don't miss him. Don't miss him. You can miss him. You can miss God. They, they went up. They went up. Hallelujah to the Passover. Joseph and Mary did. And Jesus was 12 years old. And he carried him with him. This is his first time going to the temple. Hallelujah. Three times a year they were supposed to go. This is his first time. And he went there. And they had a good time in church. They had a good time at convocation. And they got on the road, hallelujah. And they got on, they were all happy and joyful going back, talking about what had happened in the complication, bless God. And they looked around. <laughs> Where Jesus? They said, well, you know, you know, maybe he's he back there with some of our cousins and relatives. You know Jesus, he, he's a social butterfly. He, 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 he told them, bless our God. How many of the Bible said they went back? They went back through the caravan and still couldn't find Jesus. Hallelujah. And you know what they had to do? Boys, they had to go all the way back to Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Back to the temple where they left Jesus. Hallelujah. Sometimes some of you are shouting without Jesus. Some of you are speaking without Jesus. Hallelujah. You're doing all kinds of stuff without Jesus because you left them back. And you got to go back the way you left him there and get him again, brother. You got to go back and do your first work over again. Hallelujah. Stop saying you got the Holy Ghost if you ain't got the Holy Ghost. Stop confessing something you don't possess just so you can look around. Listen to me. I don't care if you look at me like I'm an unsaved man. As long as I get a seat in the kingdom. I'll be up on that altar every time they call if I need it. Yeah. Oh, wasn't you there last time? Yeah. You healed it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I got to go pray again. I got to go pray. Why? Because I want to make sure I got it right. 
Bible said, make your call in the lecture show. I want to make sure I get it right. Because when I lay across here, I can't get it right no more. When the breath leaves my body, I can't get it right no more. When they take me to the cemetery and bury me three, six feet on, I can't get it right no more. And it won't matter what my title is. It won't matter what they dress me in. But if I ain't right, I'm not going to rise right. Come on and say yeah. yeah. Come on, this is a different kind of message. And so, y'all remember Ahab? Somebody say Ahab. Ahab. Ahab was one of the most wicked kings. The Bible said none did sell themselves to do more wickedly than Ahab did. And one of the worst things he did was he married Jezebel. Uh, 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 Ahab will marry a Jezebel. Y'all yeah. yeah. tread lightly now. Yeah. I, I, are you married yeah. to a Jezebel? Look, anybody looking at me now? Yeah. Are you married to an Ahab? Yeah. Yeah. Woo. Let me tell you something. You could. Some of that fire we go through, God didn't light it. We lit the fire. We talk about the fire. You set your own house on fire. You talk about, Lord, I'm in the fire. Now. You did it. <laughs> Come and preach to Jesus. Well, Ahab was wicked. Ahab was the, the king of the northern kingdom of Israel. And at this time, his contemporary in Judah was Jehoshaphat. And Jehoshaphat, as a, a good king and diplomat does, makes a friendship with the next adjourning kingdom. Hallelujah. And praise the Lord. They come together and say, you know what? We, we friends. We close. We're going to be tight. Y'all better be careful who you get tight with. You better be careful who you make your business partner. Because Ahab and Jehoshaphat made a league together. Are y'all here? Bless God, they came together. When, when Jehoshaphat came up from Judah, bless the Lord, Ahab killed the sheep. And they were feasting, they were having a good time. Right. <laughs> and all of a sudden, Ahab sprung something on him. He said, you know, uh, I got a battle to go to. I got to go up to Ramoth Gilead. Will you help me fight? They're always trying to pull you into something. But you ain't got no business being here. Will, will you fight with me? And some of you, you, you my bug. You, you, you my bro. I'm sticking. With my friend, I'm loyal. Right. You my dog. Yeah, yeah. Better not let you better not mess with my bro. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Ain't that how we are? You don't even know what the fight is all about, but you're already taking the side. Woo! Right. Right. Oh, preacher, better y'all say it. Right. And Jehoshaphat unsuspectingly said, Yeah, man, my people is just like your people. Let's do this thing. He said, but, 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 but wait a minute. Uh -huh. See, he has some sense. He said, have you asked God about the battle yet? <laughs> have, have, have you asked God? Some of y'all are doing some stuff. Have you asked God about it yet? <laughs> have you consulted God about your decision yet? <laughs> and if I ask you if you consulted God and you get mad, I know you got the wrong spirit. Uh -huh. You better slow down. You better check yourself. For you what? Correct yourself. Have you, have you, have you asked God? Have you, have you sought the Lord about your decision? Or was it just your flesh? 
when you trying to get at them because you was mad and you was offended at them folks because the way they said, the way they, they did. Have you consulted God? He said, well, yeah. And guess what he did? He brought all them light prophets that say what they want. Well, over here. Now let me tell you something. Baal's prophets had some power. Ain't no way in the world 450 of them suckers gonna be on my payroll and ain't something they said ain't come true. You ain't, you ain't worked some kind of miracle. Let me tell y'all something. Say it ain't got power, sure. Yes. If a witch could go and call Samuel up from the dead and talk to him. Y'all quiet? Yeah. Yeah. Bible said that, that Satan, hallelujah, presents himself like he's an angel of light. He know what an angel of light looked like because he was one one time. Are y'all hearing what I'm trying to tell you? And he said, and all of them 400 prophets, they begin to prophesy. Go up to Ram of Gilead. Because the Lord said you're going to prosper. Go up. You got it in the bag. It's like they were telling the, 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 the current president, you go up, you're going to win this thing. They were see, da, 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 da. You got it. Like what we do. You know the prophet ain't halfway living, right? Some of you sisters follow these prophets, you know they ain't living right because they hollered at you. You know they ain't nothing to them because they've been in your inbox. But because they got about three, 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 three words right, you, you going to them. You stab these prophets in boxes. Speak to you. your inbox. Face, Facebook will show you a lot of folk going to hell. Yes, sir. That ain't right. Yeah. In your inbox, they'll tell you how powerful and all of this and how good you are, but they won't celebrate you on, 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 on the live part. Right, right. You know why? Because, praise God, folk that they've been hypocrite with, they might see. Right. So they do it in your inbox. Yeah. Yeah. The problem is going in your inbox. Because they know you got a prophet. And can I tell you the truth? I ain't got to see you on live to know who you've been talking to. I might not ever say a word, but when God made you a watchman, he made you a watchman so you can see. So when you get to acting funny, I know why you're acting funny. So, so, <laughs> Ooh, 
Lord have mercy. I'm enjoying this thing here. Bless God. He said, the prophet said, one by one, Shrika, you're going to prosper. But you know, you know, there's always that nagging fear. Something ain't right. Y'all ever been there before? Everybody tell you everything good, but something ain't right. Oh, before you say that, I'm a dead cat on the line somewhere. You're right. And so they kept talking and they kept prophesying and they were demonstrating. My God, the spirit behind folk following out, talking about how God going to give me a victory. And then all of a sudden, Jehoshaphat said, wait a minute. Because see, if you ever experience the real power of God, folk can't fool you with this fake stuff. If you've ever been made partakers of the holy power of God, nobody ain't going to fool you, amen, with a whole bunch of stuff. He said, wait a minute. Is that not a prophet of the Lord? If you read it in Hebrews, is that not a prophet of Yahweh? I'm trying to listen to these Baal prophets. I want to hear what Yahweh got to say. All right. Do you have one? Well, well, yeah, there's one, but I hate him. Why are you going to hate the preacher? Yeah, there's one, sister, uh, but I hate him. Why? Because he don't never say nothing good to me. Why does he pass that promise on to everybody, but he don't never call somebody you don't like. God gonna put a move in a place that you don't like. God gonna tell you to go where you didn't want to go. Some of you all the way up here in Wendell, you didn't want to come this far for church, but God put your word over here. So you got to do what the Lord say to get what you need from God. I'm sure there's a plenty of churches up in Rocky Mountain in the right, pray the Lord. How you, but, but something pushes you, amen, when the doors open, they come because there's a word there that got my name on Everywhere you live at, hallelujah, the mailman deliver your mail where you live at. Right. Am I preaching right? Yeah. My God in the morning, you can live in Beverly Hills, praise the Lord, but if you come all the way, hallelujah, to Wendell, and you're trying to get mail in Wendell, hallelujah, you ain't going to get your mail, because your mail is only in Beverly Hills. You might want Bishop T.D. James to be your pastor, but if he ain't your pastor, that ain't where your man is. Your pastor may be a no-name country, but he got a word that'll set you free. Y'all quiet up in here. While he's on the way, the servant that fetches him, now, now, now listen, Makai. Listen, Makai. Now, all them prophets, they've been prophesying victory. Now, you talk just like they talk. Everything going to be all right, okay? You, 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 you say, you say everything that they say, and you'll be all right, okay? All right. Go along, get on. Go along with the program, okay? Everything going to be good. You got this, man. I ain't gonna say nothing but what the Lord said. That what he said? And he got there. He got there, Sister Chantel. 
And he tried. He said, the king asked him, hey, Absie, Micaiah, <laughs> shall we go up and ram up the air? I already knew you don't need to go. Micaiah said, go up, O king, for thou shalt surely prosper. <laughs> the king knew that wasn't the Lord. Knew that wasn't no fitting word. But like, I love my father, I was like, thought his aunt one time to pray for him. <laughs> he said he thought it was a good prayer. And y'all got to know our auntie. She said, how am I going to get healed with that no nothing prayer you just prayed? <laughs> um, <laughs> wow. I want you to pray, boy. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's the Lord. He said, you better tell me what the Lord said. I'm paraphrasing. Jesus. This is the version of Scott. He said, well, since you asked. <laughs> I did see all Israel scattered on the hill. <laughs> Hallelujah. As sheep with no shepherd. The Lord said, these have no master. Let every man go back home to his own house. Ah, oh, see, I told you he ain't had nothing good to say. But, he said, but, but, but let me tell you what else I saw. I saw the Lord sitting in heaven saying, who shall persuade Ahab to go and fall at Ramah Gilead? And one came after this man and said this. Another came out of this. But then there came a spirit that stood before the Lord. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. That's the word. Woo! And the spirit said, you know, I'll persuade him. And the Lord said, how you going to do that? He said, I'll be a lying spirit in the mouth of all of his prophets. And the Lord said, you know what? You will persuade him. Go and do it. And he looked at him and said, therefore, hallelujah, glory to God, all these prophets. He said, God have put a lying spirit in their mouth. And when God has spoken evil concerning you, hallelujah, glory to God. Can I tell y'all something? Praise the Lord. Y'all might not like what I'm about to say today, but I'm going to tell you what the Lord showed me. A lot of these prophets run around here got a lying spirit in their mouth. They can't see correctly because God gave it to them. The Bible says because they did not receive the love of the truth. He said, I'm going to send a strong delusion that they will believe a lie and not the truth. And so you got folk eating it up. You got folk eating it up. They think it's all right. How are you to be gay and saved at the same time? And they think it's all right. How are you to be drunk? Praise God. To be a nightclub. But y'all don't like my talk. How are you to be my God smoking weed and still saying you're saved? How you? But I come to tell you, praise the Lord. He put a Shake a leg. Tell me, I can listen. The music sounds good. I shake a leg. He got a lying spirit. Jesus. Lying spirit. Donald Trump gonna win. He lost. Lying spirit. The Lord sent me to be your husband. Lying spirit. Okay, if we bump and grind, God understands. Lying spirit. God is a forgiving God. He is. He is. But you still got a lying spirit. Because you won't tell me anything to disadvantage me before God. Y'all don't like my talk up in here? Lying spirit. God said, It's all right. Lying spirit. Now, I got to break it in. This is the thing that messed me up, Troy. This thing messed me up. 
I'm going to show you what messed me up. Adrena, the Lord plainly told Ahab what his plans was for him. Yeah. Yeah. Ahab could have avoided death that day by listening to what the man of God said and don't go up the rain on Gilead. But his pride would not let him listen to what and some of y'all your pride is going to keep you from being saved. Your pride is going to keep you from being blessed. Some of you say, but God got more for you and your pride don't keep you from moving forward. You won't humble yourself down enough to hear what thus saith the Lord because you think you know it all. You are moving in uncharted territory and things are happening that you ain't never seen before. You're going to have to stand still and hear what God is saying. I'm telling you, don't miss God. Got mad at the mailman. You know what we were talking about this morning? Got mad at the mailman. So tell you what I'm going to Throw him in the prison. Feed him on bread and water. Till I come back. In peace. The man looked up and said, well, if you come back at all, the Lord ain't spoke that by me. <laughs> Y'all, this man, after he heard the word of the Lord, goes out and battle and says, I'm going to trick God. I'm going to trick God. You know what I'm going to do? Jehoshaphat, I want you to dress like the king. And I'm going to be like a common man. Because I know they're looking for the king. Is it right? Oh. So they all went out. And Jehoshaphat dressed up like the king. And the king, he's in plain clothes somewhere hiding. And, 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 and Ram of Gilead, praise the Lord. They look up, they, they ain't trying to fight no small peons. They want the big dude. Right. And they get up to Jehoshaphat and give him a good with him. But they realize, the Bible said, let me tell you what happened. Jehoshaphat had joined himself with the wrong man. He was in the wrong battle. But he had enough sent the crowd to God. He was in the wrong place at the wrong time. And the Bible said he opened up his mouth and loud cried out to God. And the Bible said, and God heard him. And when God heard him, praise God, he turned him away. And they went on. And he, you know what he did? He went back home and didn't come back no more. Because God, that some of y'all, you got in trouble with some folks that you ain't had no business dealing with. But you had enough sense to cry out to God. And because God is so merciful, he delivered you out of your mouth. Don't you go back. Don't miss that. Don't miss that. I miss the Lord on this one. But I tell you what, I ain't going to do that no more. Now, Ahab, in plain clothes, show you how powerful the word of the Lord is. Some of you think you're going to miss. You, you, <laughs> you see, God don't miss. You can miss God. But God ain't going to miss you. That word going to accomplish exactly what it said. You know what it did wrong? The Bible said, by chance, by adventure, the Bible said, one of the, one of the soldiers just drew back, didn't know what he was shooting at. He just pulled back the bow uh -huh. and let it go. Let it go. Mm -hmm. And do you know where the arrow found itself at? Found itself in Ahab. Wow. He wasn't even aiming for Ahab, but the anointing that was behind the word of the Lord found Ahab. Because Ahab didn't have enough sense to humble himself. Ahab went out where God said, you better not go because I'm going to kill you when you get out there. But the arrow found him where it was and smote him. And he told his chair, he told his chair, he said, turn it back because I'm wounded and die. Uh, yes. What am I trying to tell y'all? I'm done. Jesus. Don't miss God. We're in the last inning. We're in the last stretch of the rest, children. Did y'all hear what I said? We're on the end. This ain't no shouting message. 
Ain't no message that make you even want to roll on the floor, and that's okay. I'm good with it. Good. We are in the last days. Don't miss God. Don't be running behind politicians so that you miss God. Don't be chasing money and miss God. Don't be chasing a piece of tail so you miss God. All my single sisters in here, you ain't married yet? Stop chasing me. Chase God. God knows who and what you need. Don't get angry at me, but you ain't got enough good sense to choose the right one. Because if you did, you would have chosen him by now. Let God choose him. You need to go after God with all your heart. Make yourself available. Brothers, don't miss God. Don't miss God. Ricky, everything we need is in God. Everything. Musicians, everything we need is in God. Since I served the machine, I ain't never lacked for anything. Even in the season where it looked like I wasn't going to make it, he brought us through. There's no way in the world you can serve him and come out on the bottom. In fact, don't bet against him. You might have just gone and give me the money now. Because the Lord is on my side. Because thou hast made the most high thy habitation. He will satisfy you with long life. Come on, say amen. But this is the hill. This is the hill. Because I'm done. Maybe next Sunday I'll do the moonwalk or something. You're going to need to be saved. You're going to need the power of the Holy Ghost to get up out of here. There's no way around. Those of you watching my Facebook Live, it does not matter how good you think you are. Doesn't matter if you got that old time religion. Old time religion ain't got enough power. It's just religion. When my name is on the road, we got a family plot cemetery in the back of the church. And we done paid our dues to be buried in if we die. That's religion. Ain't got enough power to stop them and snuff. That's religion. Ain't got enough power to put down Newports and Western Sales. I don't even think they call them cools no more. They still got cools. I you know. I know you work there. It is more important that you make your call in an election show with the Lord than it is that you create an image. Because we're at the last end. Bible says a man or a woman have to be born again in order to go into the kingdom. You must be born of the water and of the spirit. Don't fool yourself. Shout is all right. But you got to be born again. Pastor Scott love every last one of you. But as much as I love you, as much as I love you, one thing I can't do for you, I can't stand your test of judgment for you. Everyone stand. 
I tried my best to warn you today. Don't miss God. We got some volatile days ahead. God can take care of his people. Understand this. He's going to take care of us. But somebody don't need to get in the fold. You're not in the fold because you shook my hand. You're not in the fold even because you joined the church. You're in the fold because you've been made partakers of God's spirit. And you took him on by water baptism. And the only way to do that is you got to repent. So this is my plea today. And I'm going to my seat. I'm not going to beg. I'm not going to. Because if I, if I took a quota today and asked everybody who was saved to raise their hand, probably a good 98% of the church would probably say you saved. But let me ask you this question. Are you willing to bet eternity on the salvation that you say you have? Do you really believe you have what it takes? That should you not make it back home, leaving this building today, that you would be saved. Everybody that died don't go to hell. I don't care how much you love them. Some people go to hell. Well, if you want to meet my mama, you got a girl up your long ago. Every mama don't go to hell. Just because she your mama don't mean she went to hell. Every daddy ain't saved just because you admire him. They in a better place. Not all the time. There's heaven, there's hell. There's saved, and there's lost. Wouldn't it be a shame to have done all this dancing here, all this crying here, and then wind up being lost? So today I make a passionate plea like Micaiah did to Ahab. That if you're not sure about your salvation, if you know that if you were to die, you wouldn't make it. Today, I ask you to make a step to make your call in an election sure. I'm not asking you to be religious. I'm not asking you to become some type of super hyper religious nut. I'm asking you to make your call in an election sure. Will there be one today? that say, Pastor, I don't want to miss God. I don't want to miss God. I don't want to miss God. I care about my soul. My soul is the most important thing that I have. What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses soul? Just remember, Remember this, when we stand before God, every time the opportunity was given, every time you've heard a word, you're going to have to give an account for it. Because this is the love of God. Somebody say, well how can a loving God allow people to go to hell? Because he's standing there with his arms open and saying, come to me. Come to me 
whatever your problems are, whatever your issues are, you're broken. I can put you back together again. You're struggling. I can make you whole. I can do whatever needs to be done in your life. And this is the thing. Right now, right here, he don't care what you've done, who you've done it with. He just wants you to come. He doesn't care about your past. He's interested in your future. Every saint standing by your hands. Father God, I thank you today. Lord, I've done my level best to present your word. And you said, Lord, that your word will never return void. One voice one place, but it's you that give the increase. I thank you for these your people today. I thank you for what you're doing in our lives. Help us in these last days not to miss you. Keep us pressed close to your ears. Oh God, in the days that are to come, the trouble that's about to hit the land. Help us to be steadfast. Oh God, may we be ready when you come with that trumpet. The dead in Christ will rise first. And then we which are alive and remain will be caught up to meet you. Thank you. Thank you for that hope today. Look on those today, Lord, that may be struggling with depression because they're going through. Lift their heavy burdens. Comfort their hearts. And let them know, oh God, that you'll never leave them. Nor will you forsake them. We thank you. We give you the glory. We give you the honor and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, give God the praise.
Hey. In fact, the last five to six years have seemed like hell on earth. Serving the Lord with the joy of the Lord, but fighting, hallelujah, in your flesh. God says this next year, I'm going to give you a break from that fight because your character has been proven, hallelujah, in the fire. When you were talking about that gold that was purified in the fire, the Lord said you were talking about yourself. I saw where you came from. He said, I called you. Hallelujah. He said, glory to God, but where you came from. He said, the stigma of where you came from could not stay on you. He said, because I have greater for you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He said, 2021 is going to be a relaunch of ministry for you. It's going to be a relaunch of the Spirit of God greater in your life. And the prophetic mantle, hallelujah, glory to God, is going to fall on you even stronger. Hallelujah. And God says, you're going to see miracles take place. He said, I know, son. He said, because I have opened up your eyes to see. Hallelujah. He said, I'm going to show you, hallelujah, what's going to unfold in the time to And there's some family members. God says in order for them to be saved, they're going to have to come in behind. They already, hey! they already know. They already know that the anointing of God is on you. Hallelujah. But in order, glory to God, for them, hallelujah, to be saved, they're going to have to come in behind you. Glory to God. They can't just say he's an inspiration, a strong brother, a strong person. They're going to have to come in behind you. Hallelujah. Because that same mantle that is on your dad is falling on you. But it's going to be a double. I'm going to show you. I know. For the It's going to be a double point. He said, if you suffer with me, 
promotion in your life. Suffering has caused a promotion in your life. And because you have chosen Mary and Martha. Martha was serving. And Mary was sitting at the feet of Jesus. Hallelujah. And Martha got mad and said, Lord, do you care that, that, that my sister had left me with all of this serving to sit here? And he looked at her and said, Martha, Martha, you're troubled and worried about many things. But Mary had chosen the good part. <laughs> we shall not be telling her, you chose the good part. 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 Come on, so tired. You chose the good part. You stepped out. You stepped out of the normal. Hallelujah. You chose the good part. And God says, not only am I not going to take it from you, he said, but I'm promoting you. Ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. But he said, get ready. He said, get ready. He said, because I'm about to soak out of my shot. I'm about to promote. Hey! I'm about to promote. Your husband is getting promoted. And because he's getting promoted, you get more. How? Oh! In the spirit. Your prayer life. How? Oh! Is going to another level. How? Oh! 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 Get ready to come running. And 
And I know all my night outside. I know we're trying to be social distance. And I know we're trying to wear our mask. Hallelujah, but the demand is about to be so great. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready, Troy. Get ready. Get ready. All you ones, how my sire. All you ones, how my sire. Glory to God. All you ones that have been here a minute, get ready. Get ready. It's time. Hallelujah. It's time. It's time for you to receive your promotion in the spirit. It's time. Y'all not here today. It's time now. It's time. Do me a favor. Do me a favor. Every one of you in here. I just need you to take about three steps forward. <laughs> Hallelujah. Why am I stepping forward? That means I'm moving out of the old and into the new. I'm stepping into my promotion. I'm stepping into my power. I'm stepping into your side. I'm stepping into your Oh! 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 before. I'm about to experience what I've never experienced before. Oh, oh. A wind, a wind, a wind, a wind, a wind. Shabba ba 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 siya. Shabba ba 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 siya. Oh, shabba ba 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 siya. Oh. A wind, a wind, a wind, a wind. A wind. Turn around three times, Tanya. A wind, a wind, a wind, a wind, a wind, a wind. A wind, a wind, a wind, a wind, a wind, a wind. Promotion, 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 promotion. Promotion, promotion, promotion. I command the dead weight to fall off. Viva my shot. I command it. Leo Sama Nana Nasia. I command it. Iso Tanya.
God has stood up in God has stood up in God has made My God made He made a best God made My God My God I can hear you Oh, no. 
situations. When you dance, my daughter will shine your dance is anointed. Dance.
Fellowship. 